Hi YouTube friends, welcome back to Open Hand Farm. You've caught me here in my workroom. This is where I do all of my painting, crafting, planting projects. Today I want to use this stool that I got at a yard sale and try to turn it into a bird habitat station. I had read on the National Wildlife Federation site for Missouri how to get registered to be a wildlife habitat and I just thought I would go over that with you if you go to their website and then find the state you print out an application form and with that application form there is a paper that you can fill out that tells what you have that would benefit wildlife in your yard. Now, if you really want to go the whole distance, you can pay $20 and register with the Wildlife Federation and they will send you a nice sign to put in your yard. That would be kind of fun, especially if you homeschool or do something with kids and you just want to have that as a, hey, look what we did. And it's kind of exciting so you might ask what would need to be done well obviously the website tells you but I'm just going to go over quickly some of the things that they want you to do the first thing that you'll need is a food source so these are your ideas of what kind of food source you can provide for the animals you have to have three of these in your yard in order to qualify in the food area Seeds from a plant, berries, nectar, leaves and twigs, nuts, fruits, bird feeder, sap, pollen, suet, squirrel feeder, hummingbird feeder, or a butterfly feeder. So any of three of those items you would qualify. The next source to consider is water. You only need one of these items in order to qualify. A bird bath, a lake, a stream, a seasonal pool, an ocean, a water garden or pond, butterfly puddling area, rain garden, or a spring. The next item to consider is cover. You need at least two of these items a wooded area, a bramble patch, a ground cover, a rock pile or rock wall, a cave, a roosting box, dense shrubs or thicket, evergreens, brush or log pile, a burrow, a meadow or prairie, and a water garden or pond. So two of those. The next thing to consider is places that wildlife can raise their young. So those you need two of, and here's the list. Mature trees, meadow or prairie, a nesting box, a wetland, a cave, host plants for caterpillars, dead trees or snags, a dense shrub or thicket, a water garden or pond, or a burrow. Um, those are the items that you need to provide in order to be registered as a wildlife habitat. The website explains all of these things in detail if you want more information. I don't know that I will get registered, but I'm using that as my source to build this bird habitat area and of course it could be used for more than just birds area, and I want it to be decorative as well. So I found this bowl that my daughter-in-law gave me and I'm like wow that's brightly colored maybe that could be my big water source on top. I will tell you what I'm going to do in the top is I want to have a pump and have a little bit of a water spout going so that birds could come and enjoy that 
or they could stand on my lower one in the more shallow water and drink from there. I also have all of these metal items, which I really like. This one I just found out in my greenhouse. I'm like, oh, that's nice. And my daughter just gave me this one, said, can you use that for anything? I'm like, yes, I can, thank you. So I took it and this little pan is just a little like pie plate kind of pan. And then I have these for my rabbits, but I didn't need one of them. And it just really goes with the others here. So then I got to thinking about how I might want to organize this and lay it out. So let's see what I came up with. So let's take these off, which I still kind of like this really colorful one. I thought I would use this one for my big water source that has the shooting water out of it. Then I might just go ahead and set that there and maybe adhere it with some glue so that it stays in place. It would be easy enough to wipe out if I need to clean it. Then this will be my shallow water source, which I could, I could fill up about two inches worth, but the birds have this that they can stand on and dip their heads in. And if I put it down here, then some could come from back here or some could stand, come and stand up here. And it's kind of shaded that way to keep it a little bit cooler. So in order to have this ladder be outside, I am going to go ahead and use a stain to put on it. I love using this Folk Art Home Decor Wax. It's actually a wax, but it is uh, an antiquing wax. So it's brown in color. And I just watered it down so that I can kind of brush it on just like you would a paint and let it soak into the wood. So I'm just gonna use what's called a little chip brush. Um, these are real inexpensive from the hardware store. And I'm gonna pour some of this in a cup because my brush won't fit in the jar. <laughs> so just gonna give this a kind of a light coat. I'm gonna brush it on and then we're gonna wipe it off. I ordered through Amazon a solar fountain. It is just this disc. It's just real small and you just lay it in whatever it is that you're going to have your waterfall in. And the top of the disc is the solar panel. So it just sits there and shines in the sun and it had really good reviews. Some people have said be careful because when you're putting it in, it's already charged and ready to go. So they, I guess, got squirted at time, which is great because I didn't know if I would have to let it charge for a couple of days or just what I would need to do. I have a two-year-old granddaughter that just loves to come over and go out to the garden. It's so sweet. I had hoped that she would enjoy that. She came to stay the day with me and she had on brand new shoes. Not a good plan for going to grandma's to go outside in the garden. So I ordered her a pair of little yellow rubber boots <laughs> and they're so cute. She now knows when she comes to grandma's to go get the boots. She'll say boots and run over and get them. And we get her boots on her and she runs to the door. She's ready to go. And then she'll say garden. I'm like. Okay, let's do it. I'm excited for her to see because I think she'll really enjoy that waterfall. I would love to know if any of you have bird sanctuary areas in your yard. So I'm just using a little old hanky. They're, they do a great job because they're very much lint free. That this has tinted the whole project, which is great. That's what I wanted. I wanted it to kind of just be a little bit darker, but it also has stained the unpainted portions to help protect that raw wood. Even though I'm gonna put another coat on it to protect that, that's gonna help even more. So I'm just gonna keep covering all of this. And if you 
feel like you need to, you can put a second coat on after it dries and it dries to a soft touch. So if you like doing this kind of project and you like hanging out with me here on Open Hand Farm, feel free to subscribe. I'm fairly new at this. My husband and my daughter said, you should probably do a YouTube channel. I'm not gonna lie, that scared me to death. So <laughs> I uh, thought about it, I prayed about it, and decided can't hurt <laughs> so here i am trying to make some sense of some projects that i'm working on and hopefully helping you in the process i love teaching that's one of my favorite things to do this i'm going to go ahead and again just use a hanky <laughs> clean one and kind of wipe it kind of buff it into the wood I think we'll be ready to take it outside and put it together. I'm pretty excited. Here we are in the garden and we're gonna put this all together. I'm gonna do the water parts first because I don't wanna chance the food getting wet while I'm trying to adjust this. Um, I don't know if you can hear this, but when I turn this over, it's trying to run. So I know that when I put water in there, it's gonna start spraying. So I'm gonna put water in the bottom basin down here and then i'm going to flip the disc over and kind of stand at a distance and put the water in so we'll see what happens it's starting to squirt already <laughs> okay let's give it a minute see if it's going to start oh it's starting see how it's kind of starting to bubble i don't want to get too close with my camera it's Hear the birds in my yard they'll be so happy to have this how fun the flow of the fountain is of course directly related to how charged it is we'll just keep putting the rest of this together and see what happens i don't think it's going to spray on the bird and I did not glue the bird food down. I wanna see how it's gonna do without being glued. As you can see, I wasn't able to use the tub. It was too deep and the fountain kept floating around on the water. Um, it would also shoot water everywhere because it was not stabilized in the bottom of the bucket. Also, the water was too deep to put it in the bottom. Since it was floating around, it was shooting over the edge and getting the bird food wet, which also meant the water source was depleting. I ended up using the colorful bowl that I showed you earlier. The water was going pretty high and the wind was blowing it outside the bowl. So I did put rocks on top of the solar panel to make it flow at a better height and not waste the water. The rocks also stabilize the disc and keep it in place. I love the way this turned out, but even better, so did my granddaughter. Thanks for watching, and I bless you until next time.